it is, it's so nice to be here with y'all. Um, originally, Cedric Gathings was going to be speaking, and for those of you who don't know, he took a job as the Vice President of Student Affairs with Marshall University. And congratulations to him, but we had a hole, and we need to find somebody really good, and those people were completely unavailable, so unfortunately, you're stuck here with me. Um, but it, it's so nice to see so many people from across campus that, that uh, I'm fortunate to work with on a daily basis. Uh, I also have my Aunt Ethel Ann here. Uh, be sure to take photos for mom. <laughs> she likes them. Let her know that I'm actually still working. I'm not just telling her fib. Uh, but, it, you know, um, professionalism and customer service are something that, no matter what your job is, uh, affects not only you and the people you come in contact with. Um, you know, we, we, can, we can certainly go around all day long with so, so many different examples. Um, how many of you, uh, you know, we're doing today on a Monday, uh, uh, Monday morning, we did this conference, unfortunately. Uh, we tried our best, as the best we could do. But uh, you, you came in, hopefully somebody greeted you with a smile. Somebody said hello to you, and hopefully that started off your day a little bit better than somebody going, what do you want? Um, because, I mean, it's just that, that moment, it, it takes so long. Ms. Tuck spoke earlier about it takes just a few seconds to make a first impression, but then afterwards it takes so many contacts uh, to change that. And so that's what we're going to talk about here today. Hopefully I can uh, remember how to work the technology. Uh, our previous speaker said that you could tear up um, some kind of computer. She would be the one to do it. And I said, hey, that's my job. Uh, so we're going to do our best here. Uh, I want you all to take just a few moments at your table and come up with one word that you think defines customer service. And I have a wireless microphone up here as well. I'm going to pick a random table, so don't cheat. <laughs> but just take, let's take about 30 seconds, one minute. Y'all talk about what rent means customer service to you, and I'm going to come around with the microphone. We're going to see what we can pull out of it, okay? <laughs> and I like to move around a lot, so don't think it's going to be just somebody within this area here. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Raise your hand if your table has your word already. Nobody's going to raise their hand. Two tables <laughs> raise their hand. Nobody wants to be that person. Three. Got one in the back. All right, so let's start this. Oh, boom, right here. Let me slide right here. I saw you raise that hand. All right. What is your one word? Uh, attitude. Attitude. That's a great word. No, you gotta say it in the microphone. Helpful. Helpful, that's a good one. We haven't made the microphone squeal. I'm doing a good job here. Our word is acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, okay. Service. You wait for the microphone. <laughs> I don't need the microphone. Service. Y'all hear him? Service. And we're just gonna hope I don't push through somebody here and knock over a cup of coffee in somebody's lap. I'm coming to y'all. Better have a word when I get over here. What about y'all? What you got? See, curse. They didn't take all the words. Come on. <laughs> this is 2016. You can find something on your cell phone. Kindness. Kindness. Kick the chair here. What'd y'all come up with? Efficient, helpful. Efficient, helpful. All right. One last victim. Who's it going to be? Oh, boom. Oh, yeah. See, that's kind of getting thrown under the bus. I wish we had a camera. We could show the look of surprise where she pointed at this young lady. All right. And who, what's the name of this person that just messed you over? <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> we could do this all day long. We could come up with so many words that define customer service, which means it's not hard to do. It's not hard to find a way to improve ourselves, correct? Do I need to keep coming around? We're good? Okay. Uh, you know, it, it's very important that we, we, talk, we look at what, when we're saying customer service, we're not just talking about something that's simple, something that just the common word of, be nice, which be nice is very important. Also, you know, a common one that we hear a lot is treat people the way you want to be treated. Um, and, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but I'll tell you my favorite example. And I, I got to speak to some people about it last week. Uh, how many of you, and it's okay to admit it, have been to a fast food restaurant within the last month? Raise your hand. All right, good. I was hoping that would turn out that way. So you pulled up. And at the window, an automated voice came on, and it said, Hi, how are you today? How many of you remember that happening? And then right behind it, how many of you had this happen? What do you want? 
<laughs> I walked into Pizza Hut one time. They were like, what are you here for? I am like, salad. <laughs> uh, but seriously, and think about it. So, you know, we make the joke, but you think about these fast food places and how many places there are around the country. The investment that went in to have somebody finally just say to you, hello, how are you today? That's how important it is to these multi-billion dollar corporations that you feel welcome. And they couldn't get their employees to do it, so they had to pay to have it recorded. Seriously. I mean, do you think any business is just going to do that because they thought it was cool? No, it takes a lot of money. You've got to have somebody record the thing. You have to have the technology. I'm not a technology person, but I assume it wasn't a freebie. Um, and that, I think that really shows where we're, where we're going as far as customer service. We shouldn't have to make up for other people. We should make a self-determination that we want to be better. Okay? All right. And I broke the technology. There we go. All right, so why do you care? Well, you're representing the university. Uh, you're representing your department. Um, we're only as good as that last impression we make. You know, it's a constant struggle. We've always got to be doing a good job with these things. Uh, living by the platinum rule, you know, treating others the way they would like to be treated. Um, you know, <laughs> found that cell phone. <laughs> I was wondering. You know, how does, how does the customer want to be treated? Uh, especially when you get into technical things of, of different natures. You know, and, and I constantly struggle with this myself because I'll go, how complicated can this be? And you really find out that sometimes things are a lot more complicated. Uh, and so you've got to treat people the way they would want to be treated, you know. You may have to do a little bit more work on your end to have them have a better customer experience. But you know what? When they leave, they're telling people nice things about you. And people remember nice things about you. The other problem is, though, they really remember when you've done a bad job. And they will tell everybody. And then everybody tells everybody. Think about that one restaurant you heard about that wasn't that good. Did you go eat there after you heard that? And then somebody suggested you go eat there, and you're like, no, it doesn't work. And then that place closed down. I have this theory that the same people work at bad restaurants, and I'm trying to find funding right now where we can tag them and release them back into the wild uh, and be able to track them to see if they really are the same group of people ruining the different restaurants. Unfortunately, there's some ethical issues, but we're working through those. Uh, you can't just shoot somebody with a dart gun, apparently. Uh, creating those positive customer, services, uh, c customer service experiences are critical to the success of the university. Uh, you know, we spend lots of money on marketing. Y'all have all seen the commercials. Uh, you go to the football games, the baseball games, the basketball games, whatever games. A lot of money created to have people having a good time, bring people in. You watch the games on television. They don't talk about the sports programs. They talk about the university, the research that's done here. But it's all done with a positive note. Well, we, we want to remember positive things. Uh, you know, professional is not a label that you give yourself. You can't just wake up one day and say, I'm professional. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Uh, I mean, you can put a name tag on. They gave me one so I'd remember my name. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, unfortunately, it, it's a description that you want other people to apply to you. And it kind of goes back to respect as well. It's not given, it's earned. Does everybody remember that? All right, good. <laughs> if you didn't, I was going to be in a hole there. All right, so today we're really going to talk about customer service. Uh, we're going to talk about professionalism as it relates to not only communication, we're going to talk about a little bit of dress. I, I don't see anybody that slagged in here in shorts and hairy feet. Uh, I call that part. <laughs> well, that's going to ruin my Thursday plans. Uh, and, you know, also managing difficult customers because uh, any job, anywhere, you're going to have people that are difficult. And um, the best way we can do is just learn to manage those folks instead of creating some sort of standoff or something to that effect. All right, so quality service, the customer service, and the first impression. That first impression is so important. You know, I know you've heard it a hundred times. You'll hear it from me again. What did your mom say to you when you were little? First impression is the most important thing, right? It doesn't change the older you get. It stays the same. You're always meeting new people. Uh, perceptions are a big thing. How do people see things that you're presenting? You know, I can tell you, can I borrow this? Mm -hmm. I can tell you that this book is blue and you are not going to believe me because you have your own perception. And it's really not blue either, but you know, that's where we're at. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you can tell something to somebody all day long, but you can only, you know, reinforce what a person already perceives. And that's the honest truth of it. Once those perceptions are made, no matter what you say, they're going to believe what they formed in their mind. 
All right, so let's take a look at this right here. There are two different things, supposedly, that you can see in this photo. Does anybody want to take a stab at what they are? You see a person's face. How many people see a person's face? Raise your hand. All right. What do you see? You see if you turn your head a little bit, you'll see the word liar. And now you're staring at this. How many people see the word liar? Raise your hand. And that's the part you'll remember now because you've formed an impression that this word says liar. Okay. What about this one? I don't know what was said over there, but apparently it's pretty funny. How many people see the Indian head? Raise your hand. All right. How many people see an Eskimo uh, searching a cave? So how many people, let's do this again. How many people, uh, after I gave it to you, saw one thing, and then now that I've told you, see something else? Because you had a perception. You knew in your head that's what it was, that's what it has to be, but there's always something else there, and that's the important part of the perception. Let's try this one. What do we see? We see a person with a very large nose, improportionate to their head, playing a saxophone. And a face. What about the Federal Express truck? What do y'all know about FedEx? This is very important. This is how important FedEx, yes, they're expensive. <laughs> FedEx believes in creating positive perceptions, right? How many people see the arrow? The arrow in their logo. Look between the E and the X. Because in the English language, we, le we read from left to right, FedEx's logo, or slogan forever was moving you forward. There's also a spoon in here. Does anybody see the spoon? There's a spoon. Look at the bottom of the small case E. That spoon has absolutely nothing to do with this. It just turns out there's a spoon in there. <laughs> but, but very intentional. Very intentional with the perception, the design of the logo. When Federal Express became FedEx, moving you forward. That was the slogan. And that's why they had the arrow put in their logo. Boop. And the spoon. All right, what about the child on the dog? Is she happy to be there? All right, so here's the truth. That's actually my niece, and that's my dog, Milo. You know, the one I'm always fighting? She was thrilled to be there. She was upset that the ride stopped for the photo to be taken. See, perceptions. You have to be there to understand it. Here's another one. I really don't have a reason for this one other than to say I bought her that truck and she loves it. And so <laughs> I don't have kids of my own. I only have my niece and I also have a new nephew. So I was just going to slide that one in there. But she's already challenging. And if you can't see, it's kind of difficult. And this laser's not working that well. Elmo's in there with her. Elmo never pays for gas. <laughs> Always rides, never pays for gas. True story. <laughs> So, we talk about service, we talk about professionalism in the dress. All right, you know, it was alluded to, I have a public safety background, and that's very much true. And so I've spent years trying to pound this in people's heads about the dress and how important it is, uh, because especially in emergency services, I started out on a little volunteer fire department, rode an ambulance for several years, and then kind of moved up to administration and doing consulting. Uh, and I used to tell folks, I don't care how smart you are, I do. Don't get me wrong, we don't want anybody to do anything crazy. But the first impression is the biggest com control factor that we have when we walk into someone's home. Uh, you could have the most confident person ever, and they, they show up, and they know what they're doing, they're very well experienced, they're very well educated, but they look like they just rolled out of bed. And then you could have the guy that, well, we haven't found a reason to fire him yet, but he wears his uniform, <laughs> but he shows up in the same vehicle. You know, these people are in need, they need help. Uh, he shows up and he sounds like he knows what he's doing. Which one are the people going to trust more? The guy that knows absolutely nothing, but he looks really well off. He's very well dressed. He seems competent. He seems professional. Because these people don't know what the background are. They only know what's in front of them. 
that's why the dress is so important. Um, you know, it, it boils down to a certain part of trust. We, we have to have trust in here. We're doing, I trust people that look like they're taking themselves seriously. If, you know, she's talking about the students and all that, and I was kind of laughing about the UGG thing. Uh, when, I, when I was in college, we said the UGG boots were the change of the season. You could tell when the boots came out. It's kind of like Groundhog Day for sophomores. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, how a person takes care of themselves, their hair, their dress, so forth like that, that plays into how well they're going to do work for me. You know, if I'm collaborating on a project with somebody, if I'm asking for somebody, if we're looking to promote somebody, and you know, we go back to, uh, you know, the face of the department, what have you. You, you know, you're going to represent our department. You're going to this. Everybody sitting in here today represents their department. You signed up for this conference. You have your name, your department's name. You represent your department sitting in here, whether you were told that you did, or now I'm telling you, you are representing not only yourself, but your department. And, and that impression makes such a big difference. Communications. <laughs> Let's talk about communications. Uh, everybody in here, is there anybody that's not busy during the work day? Please raise your hand so we know. Anybody not working hard during the day? Over here? Okay. It's okay not to raise your hand there. Um, <laughs> We get so caught up in the day and we have so many projects stacked on top of us, a lot of time we try to, uh, I wouldn't call it cutting corners, but we try to move through the day a lot quicker. Uh, and, and sometimes we've got to be very careful in our communication how we come off because uh, especially when it's not face to face, while we know that we're not trying to be rude or be impersonal, the other person may not know that. How many of you have ever gotten an email that had something in all capital letters? Anybody? Uh, you know, I've, I've actually done that before, but I wasn't paying attention, and it was the caps lock was on. And you get the message back, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> and, and I mean, but that's, you know, it's one simple keystroke. You can cause someone to think that you're upset with them. Uh, you know, hmm? I'm sorry. I was just remembering somebody else did that. You knew somebody, all right, so when they're doing it all the time, it's intentional. She said she knew somebody did that all the time. I mean, that's not an accident. First time's an accident, second time's a coincidence, third time's enemy action. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we've got to be very careful. How will this be perceived? Uh, and I have my own little system. I, I'm not one of those people that writes everything down. Uh, but I do have the, if it's going to be kind of touchy, I'll get somebody to come in and read it behind me just to make sure that I'm not coming off as a jerk. Uh, and if you ever got an email from me and you thought I was a jerk, sorry, that person was not in that day, and I had to send the email. <laughs> There's way too many people laughing at that. Uh, telephone is another thing. I am really big on answering the telephone with a smile. I, I make sure, I try to give, and it sounds stupid, uh, but honestly, when you're smiling and you're talking on the phone, um, that's going to convey through your tone of voice, uh, through the speed in which you speak, uh, and it relaxes you to an extent. Uh, you know, if you, that phone's ringing 20 times in a row, you know, every time you put it down, the light's blinking, you've got a voicemail and you're calling them back, you're getting frustrated, you can take that moment to take a deep breath and you smile. No, I can't do that for you. <laughs> but you're like, not going, no. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it's taking that moment. Smile when you're on the telephone. Uh, very simple. Instant message. All right, so I, I'm probably one of the worst with instant message because I don't believe in instant messaging someone that's in the room next to me. Um, and I'm the only one in our office that wears boots, by the way, as far as I know. Um, so you'll hear me clack, clack, clacking through the hall. But it's simply because I just find it ridiculous that you can't stand up and go, how are you today? <laughs> Instead of, oh, emoji. <laughs> you can't do that. You've got to be personal. Instant message is great. But don't let it replace personal contact. Um, you know, if you need, uh, I know in our office in human resources, you know, we're split between two floors. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I'll send something down, maybe that has like the nine-digit number or something like that in it. But, you know, if it's a question where I need something beyond yes or no, I'm going to get up, I'm going to walk down there. First, I'm going to find out if they're busy because I don't want to just interrupt in the middle of what they're doing. Sorry if I interrupt y'all. <laughs> Sorry, we'll take one here. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just, I walk around, do, do I walk around? Y'all can, y'all can, that, yeah, I definitely walk around. Sorry. I walk around here. I can't stand behind the podium. Um, 
but it's important not to use technology to replace human interaction. Um, you know, a, a lot of times when we go out in HRM and some of your departments we've been to, we do positive programs and unfortunately sometimes we do the programs where uh, people aren't getting well along as well and we try to get everybody back to center and it all starts with communication. 99 point, honestly I cannot remember at one point where there was not a communication issue in a dysfunctional department. Uh, and a lot of times it's people sit down, they don't want to get up from their desk and you start seeing these emails, these telephone calls, these instant messages where someone would just go on face to face and they would have seen those, um, those facial, inter, uh, facial reactions and understanding what that other person is going through, we wouldn't have half the problems that we have. Uh, and we don't have a lot of them, don't get me wrong. But the, the face to face interaction is so very important. So we talk about communication and, and this is why I say face to face is so important. Out of the pie chart here, for those of you that can't read it, the words only hold 7% of the message received by somebody. So when you're talking to somebody, it's what the eyes are doing, what the body language is doing. That's where people are queuing up from it. Uh, if you have somebody, you say, how are you today? And they go, I'm fine. You know? <laughs> you know, if I wrote that instant message, you'd probably think I'm fine. If you saw me bulk up like the Hulk, you might assume that maybe you shouldn't walk in front of me. Uh, that is, that's the nonverbal communication cues that we're talking about, okay? Uh, the email issues, you know, we, we, we touched on a moment ago, but you lose that nonverbal communication. You, people can't see what you're doing. Uh, you also get that misinterpretation of tone. Also, let's watch out for spelling errors. Here, come on. That's, that's my little pet peeve. Uh, formality, you know, sometimes where we may be a little bit more formal person to person, we get really, really, really relaxed when it comes to email. Uh, and finally, the, the spell of the grammar and the clarity. Uh, you know, a comma can make a big difference sometimes <laughs> in what you're asking of someone. Uh, tips to remember with email. Uh, first, choose whether email is the best medium to send someone a message. Remember, we do have, you know, email. We have the instant message. We have the telephone. And we have face-to-face. -face. Is email the best choice to begin with? Be clear and concise in what you're asking for if it's a question. You know, don't leave it really vague uh, because then they've got to email you back and then you're emailing them and then they're emailing you back and then finally you get to the, the question that you wanted to ask. Um, check the tone, watch out for that caps lock button. I'm the biggest offender, I promise, I can, I can tell you now. Uh, you know, proofread it, not just yourself, especially mass emails, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I make sure someone else reads my email before I mass email anything because once it's gone, uh, you can't bring it back, and when there's an error in there, everybody lets you know. <laughs> uh, think before you hit that button that says reply all. You know, you're sitting there and you're, somebody sends you an email, such and such, well, would you like to do this, da 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 da, and you click reply all instead of reply, and you go, well, I really don't like dealing with that person. Well, you're really going to have a difficult problem now if they just read that message. <laughs> Uh, be very careful about who you decide to reply to. Uh, do not respond when you're upset. This is, this is the equivalent of think before you say something. Take a moment. If somebody upsets you, step outside for a moment. Go get a drink of water. Go get a cup of coffee. Go lock yourself in your car and scream to your heart's desire. <laughs> be prepared to explain why you're screaming in your car afterwards. Uh, you know, but don't, don't just immediately go, well, I'll show them and then write something back because once you send that, you can't take it back. Um, your email is not private. And this is very important when I say this because we work in a government institution. Everything you write in an email is one FOIA request away from being published on the front page of the newspaper. So when you send out some little nasty gossip letter, hopefully nobody in here does that, just remember, all it takes is one form and usually about 50 cents uh, and somebody's got exactly what you just wrote. Uh, you know, I had a, a, my first uh, fire chief told me don't ever do anything unless you could explain on the front page of the paper and, and that's very important when we're talking about written communications and so forth like that. Uh, email is very routine. You know, we do it every day, but don't make your email routine. And when I say that, I mean don't just automatically reply with the same message every time. Be personal. If someone asks you a question, 
answer the person back like you're having a conversation. Don't you know, copy and paste the same answer to everybody five times in a row. That person may already know that answer. Maybe they need clarification on something else. So make sure that if someone sends you an email personally, send a personal note back. All right, so we're talking about the smile. Uh, you know, how do we say it and still lose that nonverbal? Let's bring it back. Let's give them a speedy answer. You know, if somebody asks you a simple answer, don't just let it sit in the inbox for a while. Let's just go ahead and answer them back. If you already know it, just get it off your plate and move on. Uh, make sure you use the proper greeting. Uh, this is the one I run into a lot. Uh, we'll call a campus department, and they, whoever answers the phone will just say the name of the campus department. And then I'll say, because, you know, there's some things that we can talk with students about and some that we can't, and unfortunately I don't know everyone's voice on this campus. We've got 6,000 some employees. So then there's the awkward, and who am I speaking to? And then they go, well, who is this? And then you have to go back and forth. <laughs> and then you really want to make up some name and want to mess with them, but you can't do it. Um, but, you know, when you answer the phone, you're doing a good job saying, you know, uh, my name's so-and-so, department, blah, 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 blah. And that way the person knows exactly who they're speaking to, whether it's the right person, whether they need to ask for someone else. But making sure that we're getting that out of the way and we don't start off the conversation with an awkward moment or kind of standoffish or anything like that. Uh, ignore distractions and focus on the other caller. So I'm probably the biggest offender of distracting people while they're on the phone. Um, and I don't, or someone put this out there, I don't understand the thing in your ear. Uh, I really believe anybody that has one of those things in their ear has to have a big light in their office that'll flash so that you know that they're not crazy and talking to themselves. Uh, <laughs> Uh, especially ladies, those of you with longer hair and it hides behind there, you just, you're like, is that, are they okay? <laughs> yeah, but you got to watch out for those distractions because you can be having a conversation on the phone, somebody says something, and then you start communicating with the person that may have walked into your office and you've totally left the person on the phone in the dark. Uh, and so you got to be very careful about that. Uh, listen actively. You know, don't just put the phone on your ear and start doing something else. Uh, listen to what the person's saying. You know, I, I like to think, and this goes back to treating others the way you want to be treated. I'm not going to pick up the phone and call somebody just to ramble in their ear. Uh, so I assume that if someone's calling me, they have a reason for doing it, and I'd like to get to what that is and help that person as best as possible. Uh, exemplify customer service. Hey, you know what? Even if that person is treating you a little bit rough, uh, kill them with kindness. Be nice to them. Smile the whole time. You can grit your teeth. Smile while you're on the phone with them. Uh, you, know, you know, use manners. Just, you know, if you're going to put somebody on hold, say, hey, do you mind if I put you on hold for a moment? Or, you know, I'm going to, uh, also one more thing I offend on, I am horrible at transferring calls. So if you call and I have to transfer you and get hung up on, once again, it's nothing personal. I'm just not phone. They don't have a good training course for me on this phone yet. Sorry. Uh, but, you know, tell people what you're doing. Don't just leave them there on, on hold. And if, if they're holding for someone, they're on there for a few minutes, come back to them and say, hey, I just want to let you know we're still waiting. So don't just, don't just leave them on there. Face to face. You know, open body language. Uh, uh, a thing I do to people, and I, and I mess with them, they'll come in and I'll see them like this, and I'll, I'll say, are you feeling all right today? And they're like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, well, it looks like you're really upset. And they'll go, no, what's the problem? See, right here, got the arms crossed. Uh, <laughs> And then they'll usually say something like, I'm cold. <laughs> See? But you got any excuse? But, you know, people pick up on those things. Uh, you know, honestly, the best way, if you're talking to someone and you want to make them feel less threatened at all, is this right here. Open palm, good eye contact. It looks like I'm going to sell you something, doesn't it? <laughs> it's okay, I'm the guy holding you up from lunch. It's fine. <laughs> but... But, you know, having that good body language is, so, is such a big thing. Remove barriers. Um, you know, things on the desk. You ever ask somebody to sit down or someone's asked you to sit down at their desk and there's like some big floral arrangement or something like that and you're looking this way and they're looking that way? <laughs> Get that stuff out of the way. You know, make somebody feel one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if, you, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you're distracted by something in the middle, you know, does that person think that you're taking them seriously? Or, you know, the other way around there, you know, it's a, it's a respect thing, it's a professionalism thing, it's a courtesy thing. Uh, lean in just a little bit, but don't make it weird. <laughs> it's okay to lean, when we're leaning forward, that shows that, that we're listening. 
Um, if you ever want to tell somebody's actually listening to you when you're having a conversation, if they're leaning in a little bit, it's the giveaway. I'm not saying bust them out on the spot or anything like that, but leaning in does show that you're listening to someone. And most of us, as a matter of just uh, the way our bodies function, we're going to lean in when we're actively listening to someone. And which brings us to the last one, you know, once again, listen actively. If you are talking to someone and then they start picking up their cell phone and they're, what's the, I know there's Facebook, I know there's Twitter, there's what's the, Instagram, I don't know Instagram, I know it sounds crazy, but I don't, I don't take that many photos, I'm going to take a photo of myself when we get done here and I'm going to create an Instagram account. Um, but, you know, when somebody's doing this, like I'm doing this right now, you have absolutely no idea who I'm walking up to to talk to right now, do you? Because I have absolutely no eye contact. So I have no idea what you're saying either because I'm too focused on what I'm doing. Listen to what the person's saying. Take time, take a pause, make good eye contact, and say, how can I help you today? What can I do for you? I don't know that we can do that. I am not the right person to ask. But if that's the answer, let me tell you who we could, should go speak to. Let me take you there if you don't know that person. That's good face-to-face -face contact, okay? All right, dress. I, think, I don't think I'm going to read anything off that anybody here doesn't already know or wasn't told. Dress appropriately for the situation. So, and I say this about preconceptions. You know, we sit there and there's those of us that are in the offices and all that. We have a particular set of dress. If you're working outside, this is the worst dress you could possibly wear. Is your clothing appropriate for the job you're doing? That's what we're talking about when we're saying being dressed appropriately. For the job you're doing, is your dress appropriate? You know, there's never a flip-flop situation here on campus. None that I'm aware of. I can't. Did we, did we put that thing out for the new clown that we were going to hire? Uh, no, there's still no flip-flops allowed on campus for, for most jobs. You know, you're not going to... The gym shorts is another one I heard. There's not a job in here unless you maybe work in the Sanderson Center or something like that as a personal trainer that requires you to wear gym shorts. You know, this is once again that first impression before anyone even speaks to you when they're seeing you. What do you look like? Uh, we don't want anything too short. We don't want anything low cut. We don't want anything too tight or baggy. Uh, those of you that work around heavy equipment, I especially implore you don't wear anything baggy. You're one drive shaft away from going home. <laughs> And if you don't work in those shops, you probably don't get that joke. But you can get sucked into those machines if you got something hanging off here. Uh, jeans, uh, depending on the job there again. Uh, flip flops, come on. Yeah, we can at least do a nicer sandal or tennis shoes, something like that. Uh, really high heels, you're one stair step away from disaster. <laughs> they might be cute, they might be fun, but we've got a lot of stairs. And I saw, you know, uh, what, I was kind of laughing a few months ago when we had the ice warnings, you know, they're putting stuff out for the ice and all that, and I saw people coming in, I'm like, these people are crazy. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't walk on that in tennis shoes, and they're just clacking along. <laughs> I mean, I can't do that. <laughs> that is confidence, people. <laughs> uh, you know, what does your supervisor wear? And this one's really important because how many of you remember being told, don't dress for the job you have, dress for the job you want? In your mind, everybody has a job that they want. What is the person that has that job right now wearing? And if they're breaking these rules, what should they be wearing? That's what you should be wearing now. Don't wait to get the job to dress better. Dress for the job you want. Then when it comes time for interviews and so forth like that, Man, you know what? That person always seemed really professional. They're always going that extra step. You know, we don't ever see them slopping on in here. You know, they take pride in what they do. They didn't back over their clothing line with their vehicle. You know who I'm talking about. All you got to do is throw a wet sock in the dryer with it. It'll help it a little bit. Come on, you know? I've been wearing the same thing for three days. And don't tell me you hadn't been because I saw that mustard stain two days ago. Are you well groomed? There's different hairstyles. There's different, you know, people have beards, some don't. Some have their hair this way, they have their hair that way. And that's fine. But is there an actual style here? <laughs> Bedhead is not a style, it's a way of life. 
And it's one that needs to be changed if you're trying to move up in this world. <laughs> Get up five minutes earlier and comb your hair. And I don't see any offenders in here, so don't feel bad. But once again, everybody knows somebody that does this. When fall starts, you're going to start remembering. And we're going to put these on YouTube, by the way. So listen to this again when the sp uh, fall semester kicks in and just watch the students as they come in and be like, future leader of America right there. Yeah. <laughs> Does he still got his pillow? That's impressive. <laughs> Iron your clothes or buy clothes that don't have to be ironed. <laughs> Once again, it's a choice. Uh, and, you know, uh, those of you that are in campus services, I really envy y'all um, because, man, y'all already got somebody taking care of this for y'all. Um, and that's fantastic. Everybody in campus services, if you ever look, they're always very nice. I mean, they take a lot of pride in, in the way they dress. Uh, and that is strictly, if nothing else, for professionalism reasons. Uh, and that's how much, you know, in, 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 in the line of work that they do, um, that the university invests in this. I mean, the cheapest way to go about it would be make sure you wear some steel toe boots, make sure you wear some work pants and all that. But professionalism matters so much in that department, they actually provide uniforms for that reason. And yeah, it's nice having somebody come pick them up, clean them, and bring them back, you gotta admit. Uh, you know, is your uniform neat? Is it free of stains? If it's got stains in its uniform shirt, I mean, stuff happens to clothes. I mean, it's just the way life happens. Say something to your supervisor, ask for another set, you know? Don't be forced into a position where it looks like you're not taking care of yourself. Uh, if, you, if you're in a uniform position, go to your supervisor and ask for something to replace it with. All right, finally, would your mom be okay with what you're wearing today? Would your dad be okay with it? Would your whomever be okay with it if you were asked to go see Dr. Keenum right now? When you look around at yourself, you know, in the morning when you're leaving, if I got called up to the big man's office, would I be comfortable with what I'm wearing? And that's a simple question. Working with difficult customers. Does anybody in here not work with people that are difficult? Please feel free to raise your hand now so that we can know who's not working very hard. <laughs> Don't see anybody again. So everybody works with somebody difficult. Okay. Working with difficult customers, one, we've got to understand a lot of times it's not personal. Uh, this goes back to impersonal communications and so forth. We don't know what's going on on the other side. So let's not right out the gate jump to, I'm going to get this person and they're going to pay. Because <laughs> that's not the way. I mean, <laughs> those of you who read Moby Dick, you know, Ag uh, Captain Ahab going after the white whale and just destroyed him, you know. Same thing happens here. You'll blow a whole day being irritated and upset with somebody. And the work still has to get done, and so now you have four days to complete, which you did have five days. Don't get upset right out the gate. First, let's listen to them. What do they have, what do they have to say? And then this next part seems like it may be the hardest for folks, but just apologize to them. You know, I'm sorry that you had this experience. That is, that is not taking anybody down a peg on either side. You know, you know, if you had a bad experience, I truly feel sorry that you did. So therefore, I'm sorry that you had this experience. Can you solve the issue for that person? Uh, if you cannot, and this is very important, be clear on what you can do for someone. Don't make promises to them that you can't fill. A lot of times that causes a lot of conflict. You know, hey, I'll take care of this. And then you hang up the phone and you have no clue what to do and you just hope they don't call back. <laughs> they will. They'll find you, always. Uh, those of you that deal with me on orientation, you know, sometimes we have to find a bigger room, and I swear I, I am going to call you back. It's just kind of a last minute before we know where we're going to be. So, sorry about that. Uh, but, you know, uh, I always will tell you what, what we can do. When someone calls with a question, I may not be able to answer it, but I'll say, hey, you know, I can't, but i tell you what, I'll get so-and-so to call you back or send you an email or something like that. You never want to close the door with, I can't help you and that's the end of it. It's just not the appropriate answer. Um, and then finally, thank them for bringing it to your attention. You know, a lot of times, you know, you, you kind of hate it when something goes wrong, you're like, ah, everybody's telling me it went wrong. But you'd much rather correct the problem than it sit out there and become embarrassing later on. So, you know, the, also the, the thing about that is when you're dealing with someone difficult, 
it makes them think that they've been heard, they're understood, uh, and they're appreciated for their input. Sometimes it may be a little too much input, I understand that. But we still need to try to be, you know, very cordial with people. And so that's why it's very important to thank them once the phone call ends. Once again, you know, this may be somebody that's calling and they just got to get something off their chest. Uh, it's unfortunate that that happens sometimes, but sometimes you just got to let folks talk. Let them finish what they're saying. And, you know, a lot of times if you don't interrupt people and it's something that you may not be able to help them with, just let them talk. They talk themselves through their own problem. Uh, that does happen a lot. You just let them keep talking and you kind of take the, the psychologist mode. You go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. And, you know, they go, well, I guess I could just do this. And I'll just say, okay, well, you know, just try that out. Let me know how it goes and let me know. Thanks. <laughs> you know, it happens. But if you start out in such a standoffish kind of mode and you're saying, oh, no, you're not going to call me. You're not going to talk to me like this. You know, I'm not going to deal with that. Um, you know, this person, all they do, they do what? They don't go, oh, okay, well, I appreciate you telling me you're not going to deal with it, but you have a great day. No, they're going to get really angry. <laughs> And they're going to start calling you back, or they're going to go up the chain. It, it just causes a lot of havoc. And so let's try to help folks as much as possible can. All right, so, you know, kind of wrapping up things here a little bit. Uh, the positive attitude is defined as the way that you dedicate yourself to the way you think. You know, if you say, I'm going to be positive, and you stick to being positive, you are positive. The other side of that other coin is the definition for a negative attitude is the exact same. If you are going to be a negative person, you're not going to take that crap off of anybody. Uh, you're going to stick to that mantra. You can't switch back and forth. It has to be a choice. You're either going to be one or you're going to be the other. So you have the choice. Do you want to be positive? Do you want to go home with less stress in your life? Go home with a smile on your face? Or do you want to go home and feel like the world's against you? And that's the choices that we have to make as far as the attitude one way or the other. Be intentional in what you do. That's another thing uh, as, as we kind of wrap this up here. Be very intentional in what you do. Don't just do something to do it. Don't do something so that somebody will notice it. Do it because you want to do it. If you're saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to greet everybody with a smile that day. You do it because you want to make people feel better in the morning. You don't want to do it so that people know your name. Uh, if you know, you're going to say, hey, I'm going to open the door for everybody today. Do it because you want to open the door for everybody that day. Don't do it because it's employee of the month time. <laughs> That's funny. That guy slammed the door in my face yesterday. Interesting turn of events. No. Uh, be very intentional in what you do. Uh, the, the last slide here is the Arabic version of the FedEx logo. And in the Arabic world, you read right to left. And so if you notice... We have the arrow, and it points back that way. That's how intentional FedEx is about their service, that even in the Arab world, they're always moving people forward. Does anybody have any questions? Any experiences they'd like to share? Nothing. Well, you people learn fast. I like it. My name, again, is Austin Check. I am in Human Resources Management. My name is pronounced exactly as it's spelled, C-H-E-C-K. It does not require any special hyphens or anything of that nature. <laughs> I am here to help you in any way, at any time. Please feel free to call me. Thank you for your time.